Good morning, everyone. Or it's actually noon, so good noon, everyone. And uh, it's not afternoon. I don't know what I'm saying. Basically, my head's in a million places because this Monday, it's Thursday. This Monday, my shoulder felt good. And I went to therapy to train legs, which uh, we did. And he had me deadlift 135 from the ground. Now, he had me do it explosively with a hard hip thrust lockout. And simultaneously, that same Monday after therapy, I bought some curtains on the way home and a power drill and I hung them with my dominant right arm. So long story short, sometime between physical therapy, hanging my curtains and maybe I slept on it wrong. There's only three possibilities. I feel a little tenderness, but the tenderness is only right here. Like where my delt meets my tricep. But when I think of rotator cuff without doing more research, I really picture it coming down as close to the humerus bone or onto the humerus bone as it needs to go to do what it has to do. So I'm not really extremely confident about whether I didn't injure it or not. I think I definitely, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Point is it's so minimal that it's nothing to be alarmed over, but it may be a three to five day setback, which when we're looking at a four to eight week recovery or six to 10 weeks, half a week sucks. So we're here to train legs. I'm not going to barbell squat. I might safety bar squat again, just to not even feel any tension. Cause where I feel tension in my uh, shoulder, it's like from the barbell, it's in the back. And from what I did with barbell, it's in the, or deadlifting, it's in the front. So I just need to let my shoulder heal until Monday um, when we're switching over to full on shoulder therapy. So train legs with my dude, my therapist Monday. Now we're here at Armbrist to train legs Thursday. And uh, man, I could just give up and cry and roll over and quit right now and be mad that I'm losing all my arm gains and chest gains. And, but I've been fighting an uphill battle my whole life with physique, with work, with school, with relationships, with friends. It's an uphill battle and I'm sure a lot of you guys and girls feel the same. So one thing that Artemis Dolgan said to me this morning in his Instagram um, story, it spoke to me, was that uh, these injuries that keep you away from doing what you love, you gain experience. If my shoulder was better the next day and my knee was better the next day, how how good of a physical therapist would I be when someone comes in with a knee pain from falling and a shoulder problem from incline benching? These accidents, these experiences build character and they shape us and create who we are. So these four weeks might suck. These 14 weeks might suck. I may get fat and small and girls may say, oh, did you stop working out? And guys may say, hey, you look a little thinner. I've been told that my whole life. So what I can do now is train legs at 100%. So I don't want to fuck around anymore. I may do some upper body this weekend before I go see my therapist for shoulder on Monday, but I'm going to do my therapy and man, this is going to be a leg workout, the hardest one of the year for sure. And it's been pretty hard in therapy. So channel that pig power. Let's ride. Alright guys, what is going on? We are going to start this leg training video off the voiceover portion. It's going to be pretty lengthy. There was a lot of sets and a lot of work done. But um, like I said, just waking up, we got coffee in the workout right here. So let's get right into it. As you can see here, we are using the safety squat bar. Uh, this is an SS yoke bar by Elite FTS. And basically what I would describe this movement as is the most important part is that it's not so much like a front squat with the bar there. It's a high bar squat, but because you don't have to extend your arms back, you can rest them here. It allows you to lift up like a front squat. So it's kind of like a high bar squat, but you get to hold up here like on a goblet squat or something and it helps you stay upright. Right, boys and girls, here we go. The Elite FTS SS yoke. It's probably 65 pounds, but now we're doing a plate. So that's PR, PR. Let's do these reps using more posterior chain. All right, and that's about all you need to know about the bar. It is a 65 pound bar. I'll go ahead and uh, put a little picture of this bar and where you guys could order it if 
you guys are just curious, do some uh, online window shopping as I like to do myself. But yeah, it's crazy how we spend so much money on ridiculous things these days, or the shoes I'm wearing, for example, are 150 bucks. Yeah, the rest of my clothes cost like 30 bucks total, but uh, maybe 50 bucks. But yeah, those shoes are expensive and for 400 bucks I could have a, a barbell that I've wanted to use for 10 years. And then I will use way more than a pair of shoes. So anyways, it's pretty interesting to see that and it reminds me of uh, Brandon Campbell. Shout out to Brandon Campbell, a good channel to check out for equipment reviews that are things we would actually buy, you know, $200 pair of shoes that you're gonna use for several years. Or if you have a home gym and you, Maybe you blow your back out and you want to get a safety squat bar. It's worth the 400 bucks. Um, maybe to some of you kids just getting into it who are 16, 17, it looks a little ridiculous and it sounds expensive, but after doctor's visits and uh, having injuries and things like that, you start to realize that you can spend a fortune being cheap. Think about that one. Shout out to Chris Acido rxmuscle.com but yeah we worked up to some good weight so i'll get into the technical aspects of how my knee feels and let you guys watch a couple sets here um when i was squatting when i went from standing erect and i got to with my right leg just about 45 degrees right there to there so we'll do that one more time so i have a really weird ache and weakness in my right knee area from 45 to almost parallel and with just the barbell uh, last week, I would get to that spot like right around 45 and I would feel that like, it's just like a numb ache, nothing alarming. But I would have to kind of like get through that portion with my glute and my hamstring and whatever other muscles and my left leg, I'd get through that movement and then right when it stopped to hurt, I would be able to press. This time I had that similar pain level pressing through 175 pounds, which you'll see here for reps, Boom, pressing through with my right knee and you guys see me locking it hard. I don't recommend you guys do this unless advised by a physical therapist. So, whew, let you guys watch them. All right guys, so I know that was a really long set, but I just wanted you to see where I'm at and where my effort is. So that wrapped up the squat portion and onto the one-legged squat. So just talking a little bit about those squats, um, no negative comments, just positive. So I'll stop talking about how great it was and maybe we can just move on and just do what I need to do to have another great squat session. So. Uh, as you guys saw in the last video, when I did this in physical therapy, it was like embarrassing. Like my first set doing this, every rep I did was worse than that rep. Every single rep I did in physical therapy. I know I'm leaning over a lot. I know my back is like bending, but I basically couldn't do this a week, uh, two weeks ago. And then last week I looked like I was just learning to like, you know, like it just was healing a broken leg or something like there was a complete atrophy. So that's why I put these sets in here, guys. So you can see uh, what I'm doing. I used to preach compound movements only, three reps only. And obviously, <laughs> for building muscle and powerlifting, that's probably pretty good. But I don't know everything. And that was my philosophy. And it brings me back to a point on cueing. So if you squat well, and then an experienced lifter comes and tells you, oh, cue knees out, make sure you cue knees out. They might walk out of the gym and then for the rest of the year you're queuing knees out just because that's something maybe they've learned heather grace sorry um and uh what was i saying so yeah queuing over queuing if you already have good form don't queue because you're already doing it right 
And so that's kind of where I found myself with the three reps of heavy weight and doing pause work is that I realized that's the best way to build muscle over time. But, and that is the goal with the gym, but there just comes a time when you and your body will learn to compensate, make things easier, have preferential ranges of motion. I, my squat can look perfect and I could be doing it on one leg, not pushing with my right leg. So the camera is a blessing and a curse. The camera will tell you when you look like you're doing it right. And for me, that means I'm doing it 100% right. It doesn't matter what my body tells me. It doesn't matter if there's a twinge or if it's uncomfortable, if it looks like it should, then I definitely need to do it. And that's not the right mindset to have. So when I went into physical therapy, I was you know gung-ho about getting back to squatting and deadlifting. And then after doing Bulgarian split squats, which is, a, I thought it was a stupid exercise, I hadn't been so sore since I'd been squatting in general, really. So it's been a great learning experience and very eye-opening. Enjoy some calves. y'all that is going to wrap up the workouts uh, i did do four sets of heavy calves and there was five plates on there there was a 10 and a 35 if you go back you might just catch that 35 pound rogue plate and that was it so we went on to the pt stuff these spanish squats right here unbelievable basically what you're doing here is you're squatting more upright because it's pulling you and you're leaning against it but just imagine when you lock out on leg extension that's what you're doing it's like a squat with a good leg extension so when you're standing up and you're like, hmm, how do I lock my knees out? It's just like leg extension. You don't press anymore up. You have to actually flex out and push your knees and your VMO and just all the muscles around your kneecap. Like if you're looking at me from the front and this is, these are my kneecaps, the quad muscles and all of the supporting muscle groups are just killed. So give those a shot, peace. All right guys, so we're gonna do that circuit three times each. Just 30 seconds of swings. Oh my God, 12 squats. And just six lunges because just practicing it and it's really light at this point. So, two more sets cardio and unilateral movements. I'm fucking terrible out. So, ego at the door. As you can see, we're back where we started this video and I'm still out of breath from the three by three nine set circuit I did. And uh, yeah, it was really a pleasure meeting Phil Heath. Really nice guy. Made eye contact with me. Was really kind of surprised that I went out of my way to introduce myself. Wished him good luck and uh, it was pretty cool to get to meet him. And he's really busy and I've seen him a few times here so I've never went up to him. But I figured I'd interrupt him once. And I told him sorry and said, best of luck, bro. So just another example of a great bodybuilder, great lifter who multiple surgeries, multiple failed Olympia appearances, and he's still in the gym making friends and doing what he loves. So, man, never a dull moment. Let's ride. All right, everyone. So we are finally back from the gym and uh, came home, took some GHRP2, had my post-workout oats and uh, whey, and now we came home with some groceries. And speaking of which, got a little straggler here. Stock up. About 150 bucks. So you guys know that's at least a week plus. But I uh, got some dishes to do and uh, let's get this laid out. Looks a little intimidating, but let's clean it up. Nice. All right. So we'll start over here from the right side. We got spinach, potassium, and just greens when you don't want to cook. Chicken tenderloins because they're easy to cook. They're little pieces. Got five quest bars for whatever deal because this is kind of what I'm snacking on just to keep some fat off because, you know. That's life. 
bananas as usual, just some snacks, BOGO peanut butter, the usual oats and coffee, a big ass BBQ sauce, some grass fed 91, lean beef, 90% actually, eggs, egg whites, turkey, veggies, random on sale skinny cows or whatever they was called, a couple bagels. Basically the rest of what you see here is uh, carbs, some fruits. So uh, that's it. Typical stuff that I eat. These are just for emergency only. They're expensive and overpriced, but it kind of just is what it is. And this bread is delicious. All right guys, so that's gonna conclude the video. Today's workout was fantastic. I'm still so uh, tired from it, honestly. Is it on 10? Yeah. So overall, it was the best workout of the year, up or lower, whatever. I just gotta make sure my rotator cuff continues to heal. But everything we did in the gym today was rotator cuff friendly, every single thing. So I'm gonna let my legs heal up, but they are killing me. So I'm excited. And uh, before I cook this food,